everybody. What's up? Can you all hear me okay? Um, I don't have my mic set up. Perfect. So let me know if you cannot hear me. Mm. What's up, all? Uh, hey, uh, if you are just joining and you can hear me, if you guys can hit the like button. That would be awesome. It really helps YouTube uh, promote this stuff. But uh, hey, thanks for joining. Um, so, hey, guys, uh, uh, obviously lots of news. It's funny. So I had to write my like the news video that I released a few days ago. I had written out a script for it. Then they released casting stuff, so I had to go back and rewrite it. And then, of course, I released the video, and two hours later, more stuff gets released. So, hey, I guess it is what it is. But um, but one of those big uh, announcements has been kind of the meme of the Wheel of Time community here recently, and that's uh, the whole Steve thing. So we'll we'll certainly um, we'll certainly be talking about that a little bit today. Uh, I have some cool announcements that I think we'll we'll get to here before the uh, before the end of the video too. Uh, lots of stuff going on, lots of stuff upcoming. So I'm pretty excited about uh, a lot of the stuff that we've got um, got in in the in the pipe right now. So uh, first of all, I will say this. So a lot of you guys, uh, hey MK, can you guys let me know? Uh, I did change it, but I changed it after I made the link. Does the description of the video right now, uh, does it have my old Teespring merch link or does it have the new website merch link? Can somebody let me know? Because it doesn't show me that. Um, I don't want to direct you to the wrong place because people keep asking about the shirts. Um, and there are some other ones and there will be some more. But uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, it's the new one. Okay, good. Thank you, MK. Um, so, guys, uh, I, I guess I'll do this announcement here real quick just because a lot of you are joining and I, I am getting some people asking about it. We'll definitely um, talk about this uh, later, too. But um, there is a new link down there, and I'll have MK. MK, if you can post the new link, it's just shopwheelofTime.com. One of the things that's kind of corresponding, just so you guys know, the greatblight.com, the new website, is going to be launching here hopefully within a week. I was hoping by tomorrow. I don't think that's going to happen. But um, one of the things that's going along with that, I will talk about right now, just so you guys can see it. So we have a, a new type of Wheel of Time store. It's very bare bones at the moment. There's going to be some more stuff added uh, as we go. Um, but that is going to help support the website um, going forward. So if you guys want to take a look at the various items that are, are for sale in there, uh, here's what I always say about this, guys. Like, can you get stuff cheaper on Amazon? Absolutely. There's no way anybody's going to compete with Amazon. Uh, so if, if you're only trying to buy stuff at the cheapest possible price, <laughs> uh, don't shop on my website. But uh, what it has there is just stuff. And, yeah, I'm going to make a few bucks off of it. That's what's going to go to support uh, the developing the development of the website, um, and so if you guys are open and willing, like there's stuff there that you like. Understand, obviously, you're paying a little bit of a premium for it, but it goes toward towards a good cause of of uh, promoting stuff. And you know, if you want to buy the books, I have some other fantasy books there. You know, there will be a video that we're going to make when we release all this that'll kind of walk through all that. Um, but all of the stuff there you can buy right now. And so if you guys want to uh, check any of that out, I know this particular shirt, uh, or at least a newer version of it, will be there. Um, and I know everybody, uh, The we are selling a Terran Grial. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Uh, the Red Rod Terran Grial that uh, Elaine discovered uh, is for sale. Um, so, God. Uh, anyways, I'll let you guys take a look at that. That's more of a joke than anything, but uh, I bet you one person buys it uh, just because. So anyways, I don't mean to sit here and plug a store. That's not not the point. But um, yeah, so MK's pointing this out. Guys, the banner underneath here is going to show the old Teespring thing. That's the thing linked to YouTube. Ignore that. Don't buy anything. I'm going to have that taken down. Um, but the new store underneath it, it's shopwheeloftime.com. Uh, that's the website that you want to go to. So any case, uh, we won't just talk about websites and, and 
selling stuff. But if you, a couple of you were asking, I'll mention some of that at the end. Um, so any case, uh, now that a lot of you are joining, if you can hit the like button, uh, again, that really helps YouTube promote live streams. Um, and yes, for those of you asking, it does do international shipping, but some of the international shipping is pretty expensive. So just an FYI, it is what it is. There's not much we can do to get around it, but it does ship internationally. So, okay. Uh, I wanted to hit on two things. Uh, number one, uh, I wanted to hit on um, basically some of your guys' reactions. Like I put out the news video. Um, the thing that I'm, I don't know if this came through in the, in the video, if you watched it, but the thing that I right now am the most excited about, um, I cannot stress to you how pumped I was at them hiring Scanline to do the VFX or the visual effects. That is nuts. Um, so the, uh, like, to put it in perspective, like, that is a top-tier visual effects company. Like, top-tier, okay? So, you know, in terms of, like, what that's going to look like for the show. Um, I'm blown away at that, at them working with the wheel of time. Like that takes the level of production to a whole new level. In my opinion, um, we're not going to get for anybody who was still holding on to this idea that the show was going to be the Shannara Chronicles from MTV with really crappy, cheesy special effects. Um, you could not be more wrong um, about that. So just an FYI, like it's, I was so pumped about that. And if you watch that uh, that reel that they have um, where they kind of put together all their stuff, I mean, they work on Marvel movies. They worked on the DC movies. Like, these are major motion pictures. We already know that Wheel of Time is going to get somewhere between a 10 and $15 million an episode budget, which, again, that puts the, the total budget for the show in the 90 to $100 million range, which, gosh, that's crazy. Um, so, like... Nuts. I mean, it's nuts. So, any case, I, I was really excited about that. Um, I still am very, very excited about that because, you know, I'm one of those people that like even I'll go see bad movies that have good special effects, knowing that I'm not going to watch a good movie. That I'm just there to see a spectacle, right? So, at the minimum, let's say the it's the worst writing in the history of anything. At the minimum, I'm thinking that we're going to get a spectacle, which I'm excited about. Like, even if I just got to see a uh, VFX version of the White Tower and Tarvalin, like on camera, and that was all they did, I would still be at least happy that I got to see that, right? Now, obviously, I think we're going to get more than that. The actors, actresses, the people that they brought in to score it um, in terms of making the music, the costume design, the set design, like all of that is just lining up where I don't want to get my hopes up too much, but all of this looks very, very promising to me, Okay. So then we have these announcements for, um, we have these announcements for the new, like I guess they're not confirmed, but people that have we we've heard are be, have been cast, and one of which is Steve, who has been kind of the meme of the Wheel of Time community here for the last uh, for the last week or so. So I'm curious for you. Let's start by posing two questions to you to kind of get the conversation going here. Uh, number one, what what all are what are your general feelings like are you guys exci as excited about the news that we keep hearing as i am like that would be number one and then number two um who do you think steve is uh i i would love to hear what you all think uh about both of those things so i'm notoriously awful at reading comments and so i will try to get to as many as i can uh so but uh We'll do that, and then again, if you're just joining us, hit the like button. Uh, it helps with everything here, and, and we'll keep that discussion going here. So um, let's go ahead. I'm going to take a look at some of your, your content. I see Celtic saying Steve is the casting code name. Accidentally got added to the CV instead of the real name. Uh, and I would agree with that. For anybody that's thinking, just to put this straight, like if you're joining and you're thinking, who in the hell are they casting named Steve? Uh, the, it's not Steve. Like there's nobody going to be in the Wheel of Time named Steve. OK, um, they did that with the mindset that that's just a casting code name. Like I want to say like Nynaeve and Egwene both had casting code names and I forget what they were, um, but it's just there so that they have a name when they read the scripts or when they're they're doing casting. 
and sometimes that sticks on these leaks. Uh, hey, thanks, Theo. Thanks for the. Uh, thanks for the. Uh, and I'm not even sure what emoji that is. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, but uh, again, his name is not going to be Steve. Like that, that's pretty clear. So I think the other part of that then is who could Steve be? Like who is the casting choice? I have my own idea of who I think it is, but it's it's more of just a guess than anything. So I'm very curious what you guys think. So let's hit on these. I think serious talk. Uh, well, Ipa, you stole my thunder, man. I serious talk. I think Steve is Doman and Dana is Swan. And I would probably agree with both of those assertions, especially Steve. I don't think Steve is going to be a Shamael. I, I just don't. Um, I see Scott saying that. Um, I think Steve might be Bale Doman, but I'm curious to what, uh, before I keep saying why I think that is, I'd love to hear other people say that. I see Steve is the green man. Uh, yeah, and I say thank you, Celtics. So Nine was Nady or Natty or Nady. Egwene was Eliza. Matt was Macon. So they make up code names for the casting. Um, that's not something that's new or anything like that. So I see uh, Samuel or Noel. Um, I don't think Samuel's in the. I don't think he makes it in yet. I don't think. I think we're a few years away from him. Um, Samuel Hake. I could see that as well. He could be a. I, you know, it's interesting because uh, a lot of what we're seeing indicates that they are probably not cutting much out from the first book. Like, I think there was an assumption that a lot was going to be cut, and it's not looking like there may be a lot cut. So, in my opinion, at least as kind of what we're seeing is I piece things together. Like, we know there are tinkers. We know there are white cloaks. We know there are wolves. Um, you know, we know most of the main characters are there. The things that we're missing right now, Min and Berylon, and we're missing uh, Kaemon. And then we've got a bunch of additional stuff added in where we know there are eyes that I there. So who could he be? Um, do I think he's, I see somebody saying Luz Theron. I don't think he is because Luz Theron, first of all, is not a, is not thick. I'll put it that way. Uh, and Luz Theron is not old either. Uh, he doesn't look old. He looks younger because he's, I mean, he was about 400 years old. Um, so he would be, he would look like he's in his middle age um, based on his level of power. So he wouldn't look older. He would look in his 40s, maybe. Um, the young swan is adorable. Assuming that that is swan, uh, the younger version of swan. Um, yes, she was adorable. It's very curious. I'm also, that's another question that we'll kind of get into is um, why would they have a young swan? We don't see a young swan in the books. Other than, like New Spring is not young swan. So are they taking New Spring back even younger? Are they... Are they implying that we're going to see more of Swan's backstory? Like, what is that? I'm very curious on that, too. Steve's Elias Matura, until I'm proven right. Okay. I could see Elias. He's definitely somebody that I could I could see there. Um, Beth Roberts. Most of the other code names are, uh, for screen tests started with the same letter as the actual name. So that's that's interesting. So Steve. Who could Steve be? If he starts with an S, and I think that's probably where a lot of you are coming out with Samuel Hake, um, which is possible. Um, I, I want to know how many of you actually just hope that it's real Steve. Like, there's just a Steve uh, in, <laughs> in the story. So, uh, can we talk about how adorable young Swan is? Yeah. I, again, I, I agree with you. My question, though, Dana, is who is she? Like, why do we need a young Swan? Like what? What story is there to tell um, with the young Swan? Like what? What narrative purpose would that serve? Are they trying to expand on Swan's character? Is another question. So, <laughs> some of you people, he, he's Simarog, um, Steve Althor. Yes, Powdenfane. So uh, Nagara, Powdenfane has been cast. Um, oh goodness, why am I forgetting his name right now? Uh, one of you guys will get it. Um, why am I forgetting his name? Um, yes, but Pat on Fane has been cast, and I actually think uh, the guy they have playing him is amazing. Yes, Johan Myers, thank you, Ryan. Um, Johan Myers, look him up. Like, he a couple of the, the things that he was in, I watched some of his work, like, he has. How do I how do I explain this? Johan has like creepy eyes. 
like he has a smile that looks like like evil. <laughs> like he to me could totally play Pot on Fame. Like he's gonna nail it in my opinion. So, um, Young Swan has a flashback in the books when she's assaulted. I think uh, I don't mm -hmm. remember that. Um, I don't remember Young Swan at all, other than Swan mentioning herself as a kid. Um, outside of that, I can't think of anything. Um, Steve is Bella. Unfortunately, Bella has already been cast. Um, I was wrong. So if you guys watched my original casting video on Bella, I thought they were going to go the route of having two actors. I thought it was going to be Daniel Day-Lewis and Meryl Streep playing Bella. But uh, they ended up actually casting a real horse, which I would rather have two Oscar winners playing Bella, but they've decided to go with a horse instead. But hey, maybe... Maybe it'll work out. But yes, Bella has been cast. Um, they swapped Celine to Steve, and that's the thing Brandon didn't agree with. Uh, I love that. So yes, Steve is going to try to seduce uh, Rand with power. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, we don't need any extra swan. I, see, I, you don't know that until you get it, right? Uh, maybe there's a narrative purpose. Maybe they want to explore swan's arc more. Um, Swan is certainly a character that I would have liked to have seen more of down the road in the books. Like, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of, like, once she gets to Saladar and once Egwene becomes Omerlin, Swan is just kind of a second fiddle side character. I, I, I like Swan's arc. I like the most powerful woman in the world being humbled and then rising up again to support somebody. I think it's a really cool arc. Um, <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis is the dark one. Uh, if they could, uh, honestly, all joking aside, if they could, if they could get Daniel Day Lewis out of retirement to work on the Wheel of Time, I don't care what role they put him in. I, I don't care. Um, he's the best actor of all time, in my opinion. So he is a, uh, yeah, he's crazy good. So yes, if he wanted to play Bella, go for it. Um. And yes, I do want more fish quotes, Andrew. I would love to see uh, more fish, fish guts. Um, no, you can't do anything with a silver pike, whatever. Yes. Lots of quotes on that. So uh, my my personal opinion on, on who Steve is. Okay. my I think Steve will be Bale Doman. And I only say that just based off looks. Like it, I don't really have a a real reason for thinking that outside of um, I just feel like he looks like a Bale Doman. Um, now that being said, that could be, that's not a real reason because my head cannon doesn't mean crap. Um, so uh, at the end of the day though, you know, he, the guy, the guy playing Steve is not exactly super well-known actor. Um, so now what I did find interesting and I'll, I'll bring this up again. So, David Stern being cast as, as Sen Bui. That's interesting because, like, he... I don't want to say he's not a big-name actor by any stretch of the imagination, but he seems a little bigger than the role of Sen Bui. Um, I, I, maybe they just went wanted high-end for Sen Bui, right? But, like, I just find that interesting. Like, do we feel like Sen Bui might have an expanded role of sorts? Like, not obviously leaving the two rivers, but um, are they setting this up for when Perrin comes back to the Two Rivers to have these characters be people that we care about? Like, is that what's going on? Or, in a better line of thinking, are we going to see more of the Two Rivers after the people leave? Like, um, I'm curious about that. So, uh, yes, Basil Gill was one of the other people cast as well. Okay, so at least leaked I, again none of this none of this is confirmed guys so um but it was leaked that there is an actor playing um basil gill so yeah sen is uh sen is not he's not he doesn't have a big role and so it's just interesting to me that they got somebody who has the experience that David Stern does. Like the dude's been acting for like 50 years. Um, it just seems like an, oh, wow, we went all out to get him. 
So now here's the other way of looking. At it. Here's the positive way of spinning that, right? Because they went all out to get a small character, like what are they going to do on some of these bigger ones? Um, I I would like to see men in a lane. I, I'm still not convinced. Like we don't know much about episodes three and four, guys. We don't know what's going to happen. My guess is, is that the majority of the changes that we're going to see are going to happen in episodes three and four. Um, we don't know that Camelin is going to actually be a part of the story at all, um, or at least in the first book. We don't know if we're going to see the Tracans. So, uh, could should we? I mean, I've talked about this before. The issue with casting the Tracans, okay, um, is that all of them play major roles later on, including Elida. Okay, so Gareth Bryn, Gawain, Gawad, Elaine, Morghese, Talonvor. All of those people play major roles later on in the story, okay? Like major roles that will be season-spanning roles. They'll be present through entire seasons. So the problem from a casting standpoint is this. They don't have much of a narrative place in the first book and a half other than that one scene. And so if I'm going to pay an actress to lock down for three or four or five years to play Elaine Tricand or to play Galad, right? If I'm going to try to pay them down and lock them down on a contract, I've either got to do one or two things. I've either got to wait to bring them on until they're going to be part of the narrative, which would be season two, or I have to expand their role in season one. But then that interjects more of a more of a problem. Like, how do I inject the more Elaine into the story? Because they don't want to pay somebody to show up and do a cameo in one episode. Okay. Or even just be, even if it was the full episode, they don't want to pay someone to just be there for one episode, even with the budget they do. So I mention all that for this reason. I still think it's not confirmed that we're going to see the Tricans in Cain. Um, because it would just be a cost. Like there's a major cost associated with that. Okay. So I don't know if you guys agree with that thought or am I thinking on that? It just seems like they've either got to expand her, Elaine's role, for instance, or just have it not be there. And I would say the same thing with Min, because um, it's problematic. So so what are some of you saying? And I, again, I'm so sorry here, because I'm horrible at reading messages. <laughs> so yeah, I see the ones that I get highlighted in and things like that, but I don't always answer everything, so I'm sorry. Um, Brandon didn't like that they made Min a dude and Rand a polyamorous. Um, I don't know about like that. Um, I don't know about that at all. Uh, Rafe says that they are not cutting a lane, man. Yes. He didn't say that they would not be in C. And I, I agree with that. So Beth makes a good point here. Uh, just in case a lot of you were curious, they are not going to be cutting a lane. They are not cutting men from the story. Rafe said that out of his own mouth. Um, but he did not say, hey, they'll be in season one and you'll see them. He also did, though, say that I can't wait for you to meet Elaine. Right? Like somebody said, I think it was Priyanka that said, I can't wait for you to meet her. And that implied that she had already been there. So it's also possible that Elaine is already in there. Uh, now, MK says if they're going to do the Great Hunt in season one, that Min and Elaine have large parts, which is true, but only in the second half. Like, we don't even meet Elaine and Min in the Great Hunt until basically halfway through the book when the girls arrive in Carvalho. That's the first time we meet Elaine, or at least Egwene meets Elaine, things like that. So I don't know that we're going to make it that far. Like, that would be pretty far into the books for them to have any serious uh, role. Now, if they're going all the way through book two or all the way through the Great Hunt, then sure, they have large roles. So it's interesting. Now, Celtic, I didn't I didn't read it that way when she said she couldn't wait to meet Elaine. I, I thought she implied I can't wait for you all to meet her is the way I, I remember it. But I could be wrong. Um, okay, so I see, and I, I see a lot of you saying this. So um, one of the things that I that people have suggested is well, here's how they could expand Elaine's role. They could show Logan going to the tower. Like they could show that. And while that, yes, that would give Elaine a role, that would give her something to do, 
here's the other thing I pose to you, though. You don't put scenes in that do not add to the plot. What intrigue, what entertainment value, what what would add to the plot? And, and again, there could be some clever writing here, but just seeing Elaine on a horse riding down the road with a bunch of people on the way to Tarvalin, what narrative purpose does that serve? What does that do to advance the story? What does that do that is entertaining? Um, and so those are all things that would have to be thought through. Now, again, can you do some writing around that? Sure, you could. You could absolutely add to that from a writing perspective. You know, for instance, I'm just trying to think of things that come to mind here. Um, you could you could have, that could be part of seeing Loghain kind of basically still being proud because he has not been gentled at that point, right? And you could see the fear, and that would then set up the uh, Loghain being gentled, right? Now, here's something that just popped into my head that I'm curious about you all think. What has been the talk from the cast and everything about Loghain? What's one thing that you guys have heard them talk about? What's one thing you heard Rafe talk about with Loghain? Say, I'm curious about this because... This is leading me to think now, and I don't know why I just thought of this. Most of you probably already did, and I'm dumb. But there's a serious implication that we're going to see Loghain gentled in the eye of the world. That we're going to see the, him lose something. That we're going to see him lose the ability to channel. Go from being proud to being humbled and powerless, right? And there's some of the, th like, the scenes that, like, Rafe made a comment about Loghain bringing him to tears. Like, things like that. Like, how hard that is going to be, right? Does that mean that we're going to see Tarvalin in Season 1? Does that mean we're actually going to get there? So that would include Elaine, right? Like, if we wanted to follow that whole story and see Loghain actually gentle, do you think that we're going to see Tarvalin? In season one. Or are we say, okay, so I see somebody saying maybe we'll see him start to go insane. I don't get that. In, I, I don't think that we'll see him go insane. Um, uh, I guess that's just a off the cuff thought for me, but I, I, I don't think that because primarily I, I feel like we still need to set Logan up for later. And I think they're going to more show his fall from power or his fall from grace or his what a loss. Um, that is. And I think the reason that that's really, really important, in my opinion, is it sets up the consequences for Rand. Okay. Again, thinking, put yourself in a television role. Okay. Rand seeing what happens to Loghain or the viewer seeing what happens to Loghain um, is really, really important as a foreshadowing technique or really just it sets the stakes. Um, we need to feel like Rand is in trouble. And that there's genuinely something terrifying about people finding out that he can channel and what could happen to him. Okay. And so I genuinely think that there's a possibility that we're going to see that and that it's going to be horrific because that sets the stakes for our main character being able to channel and why all of the people around him that actually know about it are so horrified by it. And it also sets up the stakes for the fact that Swan and Moraine help him and Varen. That sets the stakes on them as well. So when this all comes back to Swan um, and she gets deposed, that that's it's going to be impactful. Like you've got to set those things up. Uh, I see Epa saying one episode called Flame of Tarval, and that could be the one where Lagina is gentle. And I, I would agree. Um, either that or the Dragon Reborn. Um, one of those two. I think it could be there. And I, I can envision, I can envision two stories simultaneously happening with Rand first channeling, and then Loghain being gentled in the same episode, and kind of setting that dichotomy about what's going on. Um, I can see that being very, very uh, visually entertaining or stimulating. I'll put it that way. Um, now, another thought that uh, would be there could be this. The, the the Red Aja had been in trouble for just gentling people on the spot, right? What if they did that with Loghain? 
just curious. Um, somebody implying that we're going to see Cadsway. Uh, maybe. I think it would be, I, I don't think they need to introduce, I think introducing Cadsway in this early would not really be um, helpful. I, I really, Cad Swain's introduction, when it was in, when she's introduced, is important to me, and the reason is is because we, as the reader, did not know what she was about when we first met her. Like basically, we just saw this lady who was very full of herself, and she was deliberately pissing Rand off, right? And nobody, everybody else is terrified of Rand. He's made eyes that I bow to his feet, made him swear fealty. He's basically keeping them captive. And then you have this Aes Sedai bust into his room, treat him like shit, and leave, right? Um, and we aren't really sure as a reader who she is or what she's about. And I feel like us not, like a, for new viewers, I think that's going to be equally important. So I feel like introducing her too early could take away from that storyline. But that's just my thought. Okay, so... Uh, so I'm sorry, let me hit on some of your comments here, guys. Again, I'm so sorry about comments. Again, if you don't mind hitting the like button, again, it helps YouTube tell people I'm doing this. So if you don't mind hitting and interacting and whatever. So uh, gentling looking before he goes to Tarvalin defeats the purpose of having him go to Tarvalin. If he were gentled rather than captured, they would just leave him. And I agree with that. So I don't, I agree with you, Andrew. I think more of the, I think it would be cool for us to see Tarvalin. So I think it's very possible that we might. Um, I think a lot of this could simultaneously be going on with the events of the Eye of the World um, and what's going on there. So seeing a clip of Loghain fighting Aes Sedai and him killing some of them before shielding a gentleman in the tense final segment of the fight, how can it get better than that? Again, I, 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 I even talking about some of these things, guys, like how freaking cool is it going to be to see all of this live? Like, how cool is it going to be? Um, I'm just, I'm excited. I uh, I really, really, really hope, and I'm not being pessimistic. I, in fact, I feel like I'm overly optimistic. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't have any reasons right now to be pessimistic. Um, there, there are a couple things that, that slightly worry me. Uh, that are not necessarily production related, but more so like, are they going to release them all at once? You know, Amazon just, Amazon just came out. Like they're going to, they, they released the release schedule for the boys. They're going to release three episodes and then one weekly after that. Um, and maybe that's a model for what Amazon is doing in the future. I'm definitely more okay with that than them dropping all eight episodes at once. I really don't want that. Um, Okay, so I see, oh, Team Gay Loghain. Okay, so I don't know if somebody mentioned this before. I would 100% be in favor of Loghain being gay. Um, I think that would be, uh, but I would also like to see them not make a big deal of it. So I would like Loghain to be gay, but not make it a big deal. Um, so, yeah, uh, I Here's what you have to avoid, and and you know I say this coming from obviously a unique perspective on that regard. Um, but representation matters; it really matters. And I'm going to throw a plug out there. Uh, I tweeted about this yesterday. If you guys have not watched Wheel Talk or subscribed to Wheel Talk um, with Rakapa Sadai, um, hey Tim, I'm going to catch your comment in a minute here. Thank you, um, and I'll. But I want to finish my thought here real quick. But I appreciate it. Um, if you have not watched Recapa Sadai's video on Wheel Talk, you need to do that. Um, first of all, quick plug on on Wheel Talk. It's basically a book recap of Eye of the World done from the perspective of a, an Aes Sedai named Recapa, which is freaking hilarious. Um, Brian, um, I actually don't know Brian's last name, but you all are missing out if you are not watching that. It's hilarious. Uh, mm -hmm. You should watch it. But at the end of at the end of Recapa's last video, Recapa, who is actually Brian, uh, did a talked a little bit about his experience with Wheel of Time and Pride being a gay man and reading the Wheel of Time and not feeling represented until later on and how much that meant. 
Um, the reason I mention that is representation absolutely matters. It matters, it matters, it matters. However, okay, the representation done in a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, I'm trying, I'm, again, it's always hard. I'm trying to think. Of, uh, representation that's done just as a token representation is not what anybody wants to see. Um, I want it to be not a big deal. And, and Recapa mentioned this, or Brian mentioned this. The fact that there were casual mentions of gay men uh, in the story and that it didn't matter to anybody, okay, was important. You don't need to make a spectacle of it. And that's what's important. Um, I'm going to come back to that because I want to hit to Tim Raleigh. Thanks for, thanks for the donation, first of all, man. I appreciate it. Guys, anytime you you donate money for this, um, especially now that I may be doing this full time, um, it's awesome and I appreciate you. Uh, so got here a little late. Not sure if we're ready to go there yet, but are they doing parts of New Spring and could Steve be uh, Vakuma? Uh, I don't think that we're going to see all of New Spring. I think there's going to be flashbacks. I think they're going to be flashbacks over the course of time. And I think Steve is probably Bale Doman or somebody in the first season. Um, I don't feel like he doesn't look like if, if Lan is Asian, you know, Lan's a Korean actor, and they're really going for, uh, you know, there's a lot of Asian themes to the Borderlands, especially Malkir, um, especially with like Top Knots. That's, uh, that's kind of a traditional um, thing. I, I don't feel like he fits the role of a, you know, of a Shinar, or I'm sorry, a Malkiri. So I, I would tend to think, uh, Tim, that he is probably somebody like Bale Doman, would just be my guess. So, but any case, I, so coming back, I, I, I want to do, yeah, pandering is probably the word I was looking for, Lauren. Um, like, you don't want, like, I don't want them to make gay characters and then just really make it, like, again, pandering. It, it, you don't want it to be pandering. You want it to be real. Like real relationships in a world that no one thinks anything of it. That's the right representation. Okay. The wrong representation is to make a big deal of it. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's at least my, uh, uh, my interpretation of that. Okay. Um, and it, cause it needs to be normalized. Like it is normal. There, there are gay people everywhere. Okay. Um, it is incredibly normal. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, people are who they are. And so it needs to be treated as such. Okay. And that normalization is really, really important from a representation standpoint. We need to make people growing up that are reading the books or seeing the show for the first time. If you're a 16 year old gay kid, um, seeing that be normal and not thought of as being weird and that you're screwed up, that's important. So, I just, I loved Recapa's video. You all need to watch that. If you have not, um, if you have not subscribed to Wheel Talk, you need to do that. So, any case, any case, uh, yes, yes, that's, thank you, Dean, you put it. Don't make their main character attribute that they're gay. <laughs> uh, the fact, uh, who they choose to love has nothing to do uh, with anything other than that's a part of them. That's not who they are, okay? And so that's really, really important. I love the way you put that. So, any case, uh, yes, Betty Betty White as Lanfear, that's funny as hell. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, whew, there's my my rant on that subject. Uh, curious what you all agree. But um, one thing I will mention here, because this is an upcoming topic, I don't want to get into it too deep because uh, I'll be talking about this in a collaboration with another content creator. Um, but sex in the wheel of time and kind of how that pertains to everything. Um, I think that's another interesting thing that is going to come up is how are they going to portray sex in the series? Are we going to see it? Um, how normal will it be? You know, that kind of thing. So it's interesting. Um, I think all of that kind of ties in a little bit. Okay, Henrique, uh, Loghain would be better as a bisexual man than gay. Uh, I think that's because uh, because of his relationship with the Aes Sedai that he binds. His... So they could change that, yes. In the books, Loghain has 
you know, basically a sexual relationship with, uh, what's her face, Gabrielle, Gabriella. Um, although it's one of her doing or one of her uh, advancing on him, not the other way around. So could they change that? Yes. Um, could they make, could they make, could they make him bisexual? I also think that would be important. So I think that type of representation is never bad. I, I don't think that would be a bad thing at all, Henry. Um, I've always thought that most of the women in the Red Aja were probably lesbians. I don't know that I would say most, but there are certain ones that we know of. Uh, it's implied heavily that Elida was was gay. Um, Galena has said she was, I mean, Galena's own thoughts said that she was gay. Uh, now, what I want to avoid with that is they made all the bad characters, like the bad guys, gay. You don't want to do that. Um, but that's interesting. <laughs> Sean Bean as Ingtar. I mean, that would be very fitting, wouldn't it? Kill him off, same season. Yeah, I don't think Loghain needs to sleep with Gabrella. I don't think that has to happen. Um, but I could. I think Gabrella trying, I don't think that's bad. Uh, but would it work? Maybe not. So Galena is definitely an example. I know Elida was another one. There are pillow friends. Here, here's my take on the pillow friends, though, guys. Um, so I and, and I'll say this more of a let's educate perspective than it is. I think on the surface, when people talk, well, RJ wrote in pillow friends. That means he was super progressive and gay friendly. The issue I have with that is this, okay? And it may not come across or it may not be evident to people that are straight. But that's kind of an example of, oh, well, we did it because there weren't other people around to have sex with. So we just did it with each other. But we kind of grew out of that phase. Like that's the implication when they talk about pillow friends and when they're when they're described, right? Like, so yes, is it pro lesbian sex? Like, is that does it normalize that? Yes, but it also heavily implies that we're just lesbians because it's convenient for us to be lesbians right now, but we'll stop being them when it's not. Um. So, and I see, yeah, see, Celtic says the same thing. So, uh. That's my issue with that, okay, is that we're gay because it's convenient to be gay, but we're not really gay. We're just doing it because it's convenient, right? And that's not really a real experience. Like that's, you know, if you were locked on an island with somebody of your sex and you're straight, you're not going to be uncontrollably driven to have sex with them. Like that, <laughs> like that isn't something that's real. Uh, so I see somebody wrote... Uh, yeah, like pillow friends are pretty much college girls experimenting trope. Like, yeah, let's girls gone wild, like white white tower edition. Um, I, I yeah, I just I don't feel like that. We could that happen? Sure. Like, is sexuality a spectrum? Sure. Okay. Could people are sex and sexuality two separate things? I mean, now we're getting way off the rails, but yes, they are. But let me add this: that should not be the main representation of LGBTQ. Uh, things in the show, right? Like, if that's the only representation that you have, um, that's probably not a good thing, okay? At least in my opinion. Like, that doesn't really... That really doesn't uh, express normalization, okay? So I'll just put it that way. Now, okay, so Anthony Jack says this. I'm a gay man, and even though it says that some sisters maintain those pillar friend relationships long term. That's true. Some of them do. But they also don't. A lot of them don't. Like it's implied Moraine and Swan were pillow friends and then they weren't. Uh, Elida had a pillow friend relationship with Madani and then stopped and because it wasn't appropriate anymore because they weren't novices. And now they might want to strike it back up, right? Like it, uh, I just think you have to be very, very careful um, with that. So any case, yeah, I see a lot of people are love my Girls Gone Wild White Tower edition. Um, We'll definitely have to make that parody. They can pick up a red rod Tarangrial from the Shop Wheel of Time store. Uh, so, yeah, there there could be, uh, again, I don't want to, so let me be very clear on this. I think normalization is important on that front. Like, I feel like it's important to normalize the fact that there are gay people in the Wheel of Time universe in the same way that there are gay people in our universe. 
you don't necessarily have to agree with that lifestyle to be okay with that. Okay, because look, whether you agree with the fact that gay people exist or not does not change the fact that they do. Okay. Um, you know, in the same way, I'll give you, now this is a horrible analogy, but there is some truth behind this. I don't agree with white supremacists in any way, shape, or form, but I can't deny that they exist in our world, right? Like, that's a part of the world. And one of the things that we see in the real time is, obviously, we don't necessarily have white supremacists, but we have, like, the white cloaks play a role in that, right? Like, there's obviously some very clear analogies with that. Um, you have people that do have prejudices. Now, their prejudice is not, not based on skin color or gender or sex, but their prejudice is based around can you channel or what are you what do you believe in, that type of thing. Those are those are issues explored in the wheel of time. Robert Jordan very clearly stayed around from racial discussions from now he did obviously gender was a big thing, but racial discussions, um, sexuality, like those were not main sources of division in that world. Okay, but those people exist. So and yes, I again, I don't mean to use that. I see people saying people aren't born white supremacists. And I'm not meaning to equate being gay with being white supremacist. Not at all. Um, what I'm saying, though, is, is that people that have viewpoints or people that are one way or people, they exist in our world. Okay, well, there are lots of people that are different from me. Um, and it's important that not every character has my belief system, my looks, my way of speaking, um, my cultural foundations, like it's important that all of those boxes, okay, uh, are checked. So yes, I, I said up front, guys, it was a bad analogy. That wasn't my intention to say those things are equal. Uh, but more so to say this, uh, it's important that whether we like things or not, you don't have to agree with something to understand that it should be represented uh, because it's a real part of our world. Uh, now, do I want to see white supremacy? No, uh, I don't. Uh, but we're going to have concepts like that explored, just not based around, like prejudices and racism are going to be explored in these books, or are explored in the books. They're just not necessarily racism in the sense of skin color, but you have prejudices against the IEL, right? Like there are similar concepts that Robert Jordan chose how he wanted to explore those concepts. So again, we're a little bit off the rails on that, but my point on it is this, okay? Um... See, uh, let me see. I changed the metaphor a bit. I don't, I don't, just because I don't like snakes means they don't exist. And that's probably a good way of putting it. Okay. Um, so, any case, kind of to bring it all back, um, would I like to see gay characters? Absolutely. Do I want to see it done in a non pandering way? Yes. Uh, I just want it to be normalized and real. That's, that's my opinion uh, coming from a gay man, right? So, uh, that, that's my opinion. Now, uh, we all have Sean Chan, prejudice towards people being lesser, not part of their empire. Yeah, like there's slavery. Like I, that's a great example. The, most of us, I, I would I would say this. If you and the channel endorse slavery, you should probably unfollow me. But I would say that's fair to say that all of us are anti-slavery. Okay? Uh, there's going to be the Sean Chan are slavers. The Sharans are slavers, right? Um, those things are going to be present in the books. Like... And so, uh, any case, uh, just a thought. So, any case, guys, I, I, uh, I'm going to try to get to some of your comments here because I'm uh, notoriously awful. When RJ wrote this, it was a time when the topic of any homosexual behavior was taboo. And I think Pillow Friends was a way for RJ to incorporate it in a way that he's comfortable with. And I would agree with that, Timothy. I, I, here's the deal. I don't, I don't think – so this is real, okay? Okay. Uh, you know, RJ was in the army. There are lots of gay, I, you're intimately close with people. And I don't want to say there are gay people all over the army. That's not what I mean to say, but um, it was clear that he knew gay people existed. Like he did try to write that in, them into his story, but it was a different climate where I don't want to hold, I, I'm always very careful about holding people that in from writing in the past to our current day norms. Right. Um, so I think we need to be careful with that to say, well, he just wasn't progressive enough. Well, he was in a different time, and that's not necessarily a, a, an excuse, but it also is real, like he had to get published. And books that were heavily themed that way are not going to be popular. 
at that time. Um, I mean, heck, it's not even been that long here in America that gay marriage is norm is legal. So, um, yeah, I, I I don't want to hammer him on that because I do think he tried to be very progressive, but there are times where I think he tried and failed. Like uh, a lot of people will argue that Halima is a good example of writing in somebody that's transgender, and actually, that's actually a really awful example of it. Um, and I. We'll maybe talk about that one in a different video because I don't want to get off on the rails on that again. But that's a pretty, it's a pretty bad example of somebody being transgender. Um, and I know that's, um, yeah, I, I know that's something that a lot of times people will point to, uh, but it's not exactly a very good one. Um, so, yeah. And, and look, I see people mentioning this too, the whole Thailand and Matt thing, like, is that rape? Is it? And I think very clearly from our point of view now, that's very clearly rape. Uh, she pulled a knife on him and said, take your clothes off. I don't know any any court that will be legal in today. So, so in any case, um, guys, uh, I want to, you know, we're coming up here on the hour. Um, I want to quickly hit on, and I'll get to some more of your comments here, but I want to quickly hit on a couple things that are going on. Uh, some things personally, what's going to happen with the channel here things that are launching, website things. I talked about talked about a few of these things early on in the video, but I'll hit on a lot of them here. Um, so two things. Number one, uh, I want to say this. Uh, thank you to everybody for the support and everything. I've been kind of, I've had a, I don't want to say fairly rough two weeks. Uh, I don't want to say it's been rough, but it's been more emotionally draining is probably a way of putting it. Uh, long story short, I'm walking away from my business that I've had, and I'm kind of looking into the future and what I'm going to do. And uh, one of the strong candidates for things I'm going to do is to try to be full time with YouTube. Um, and so, as a part of that, you know, with all the other things, I mean, we're building a website. We're obviously we have a store now. There's just a lot of things going on um, that I think are positives, but it's going to be. And so what that might look like for me is this. Number one, as soon as I get the website launched, you're going to see a very serious uptick in the number of videos that I make. Um, so you're going to see that a lot. Uh, just FYI, you're going to see a lot more videos, a lot more live streams. I may be doing a lot more live streams on Twitch um, once I can get some of that figured out. Uh, Twitch just offers me a little bit more that I can do during these live streams and a different platform, which is kind of fun. And even if you're not used to Twitch, it's really easy. You just click a link and you watch the same way as this. Um, and so definitely follow me on social media so you can kind of be updated on some of those things. Uh, I have, but so a couple things I want to hit on. Number one, I see a bunch of you asking about shirts. Um, guys, you can get any type of shirts and all kinds of merch. Go to shopwheeloftime.com. That is the new website that's going to be attached to the greatblight.com, which is the, the community website. Lots of cool stuff to buy there. There's going to be a lot more stuff in there. Um, understand, number one, that a lot of those, like you're always going to be able to get stuff cheaper on Amazon. That's not the point. Um, it's just a way if, if if you're just looking to get it cheap, go there. Um, but if you would like to help support the channel and get some stuff at the same time, I mean, you can get fantasy books. You can get real-time merch like shirts. Uh, there's aprons. There's all kinds of stuff you can get. Maps. You can actually buy that map. Um so definitely go there for that. Uh, but also, uh, you know, so you can see all that there. The, the website should be launching here within a week. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say to you guys, and I, I just sent out uh, probably about an hour before we hopped in the live stream here, I sent out a message, uh, some of you wanting to read the shirt. Um, but I sent out a message to all my patrons saying this, like I've kind of redone my Patreon. Um, for So for those of you who have... Um, for those of you that have been supporting me on Patreon, first of all, thank you. Um, you know, it's been like, I really can't do this literally going forward without your support. So thank you for that. Number two, uh, if you are wanting to support me, that is the best way to do it. Uh, it really truly is. Uh, there's some new tiers there, some new things that will be going forward. And I would just say this to you all. Um, if you do want to support the channel, check out the Patreon. It's linked in the description. Um, if you feel like you have the means, don't do it if you don't. Okay. But if you have the means, you're appreciated, um, so much. And so, yeah, if you don't mind liking the video, uh, 
you know, reach out to me on, and definitely the other thing is this, join the Discord. It's free. Um, where I'm in the middle of right now kind of revamping some of the permissions, so hopefully we're going to have it. We're trying to set up the Discord server so that, like, it's totally spoiler-free. Like, we've got, obviously, a lot of spoiler sections, but, like, let's say you're a new reader that you, you're on Fires of Heaven. Well, you'll be able to check a permission in the Discord server that will only let you see things for the channels to discuss stuff up to the Fires of Heaven. Like, you won't be able to read Memory of Light spoilers. So it's hopefully very, very cool in that regard. Uh, I'm trying to hopefully, I want to make the community very friendly to new readers because as the show comes out, there are going to be a lot of new readers. And so I'm really, really excited about that. Um, so guys, uh, support that. We'll have the new, uh, we'll have the new um, website coming out here very shortly. Keep in mind, it's going to be a beta version. It is not going to be the completed. Like, we're going to have the content creator stuff up where we can feature content creators. Uh, we're going to have links to new articles. We have some people writing blogs. Uh, there are going to be some very bare bone wiki articles that are up. We're in the middle of adding a bunch more of those. So, uh, there's a lot going on with that. I'm really pumped to get it out to you guys. Hopefully, you know, I've been talking about it long enough. Um, so, any case, guys. Thank you for the support. You can find the link to the store in the description. It's shopwheelofTime.com. You can find the link to the Patreon. You can find the link to the Discord, all of it there. Thank you all for watching. I uh, appreciate you. Um, and until next time, peace out.